Hi, right, it's Greg Harrell again. I'm gonna keep talking about settings in Vim. Uh, I realize there's a couple other places where Vim can create files kind of automatically in the background um, in an annoying way. Uh, so I'm gonna deal with those before we move on to other settings. Uh, the first one is Vim info. And as you can see here, this setting block here I've got is a little more complicated than the other ones, probably only because it evolved over time. Uh, I realized that for some puzzling reason on some machines, things like my command line history weren't being remembered when I came back to Vim. And the reason was that I had a Vim info file that was being created by root in some root own session. And then I tried to uh, use Vim as a normal user. And of course, when I was using it as a normal user, I couldn't update the Vim info file, which means meant that the command line history never updated. Um, so the first thing I added was actually this, which is that, you know, if you have this Vim info file uh, and it's not readable, uh, then you should print a warning. Uh, I later decided to add this root check up here um, to make sure that we don't actually use Vim, Vim, Vim info at all if we're the root user. Um, and then finally, there's just the typical thing where I'm trying to move the Vim info file out of the way to reduce like clutter in the home directory. Um, so that's what that's all about. So Vim info is another one uh, where you might want to do something to keep the clutter out of the way. Um, the other one are these make session files. Um, where viewdir is the setting here uh, that allows us to control where these view files get created. Um, and as noted here in the comment, uh, the commands that you use to create these view files are make view um, and load view. So these are basically ways of saving the state of Vim in terms of what, you know where the splits are and whatnot. At least I think that's what it does. Oh, there you go. The argument list used the window, the file being edited, etc. Okay. Um, so that really is, as far as I can remember, the last place where we look at files being written to the file system by Vim. So let's move right along. So down here on line 25, uh, this is something that I think I've briefly touched on in other screencasts around uh, making the currently selected window more obvious. You notice uh, that. As I move between these panes, the selected area, the selected pane becomes obvious. The other one kind of dims in some way. Uh, and the reason that's happening is because I'm drawing over here on the side these color columns. I'm telling them to color all those columns. And in the, the one that's not focused, I'm telling it to color all the columns. And so what you're seeing here in the settings file is the basic default setting that starts at the text width, which is over here, uh, probably around there, uh, at around column 80. From there onwards for 255 characters, we're gonna turn color column on using this setting here. Uh, cursor line is what's responsible for highlighting the current cursor. I'm gonna turn that off so that you can see the difference. Um, I like cursor line just because it makes, oops, it makes it more obvious at a glance where I am. Um, Having a bit of trouble using Vim here. There we go, I like that. Um, skipping past the pseudo user stuff. Expand tab, because spaces are better than tabs, despite what it says on the Silicon Valley show. Uh, folding, this is the last one I'm gonna show on this screencast before I cut the chase to the next one. Sorry about my, my language. I'm, obviously my brain's going to pieces here. Uh, it's possible to tell Vim what characters to use to draw certain parts of the UI. So in this case, I'm telling it to use this particular vertical bar character, a Unicode character 2503. And you'll notice that it creates this nice broken vertical line or unbroken vertical line, I should say. The default one is gonna look a little more broken. So this just makes the UI look a little bit cleaner. Um, the other fold related setting uh it's kind of crazy as well this is gated on folding but if you have a look at it in here it is because the help says that this setting only exists if folding and windows are compiled in so that's why you always read the help just to make sure that you can gate this stuff appropriately uh, fold method indent is the simplest dumbest method um, I've chosen it because it is fast basically it enables me to fold stuff based on how indented it is um, but it's not clever uh, it doesn't use any kind of semantic analysis which means that sometimes it does kind of dumb things but it's fast 
Um, and that is all. So I'm going to gather my thoughts for a couple minutes and then come back, hopefully with a clearer head, to continue talking about some settings that are in a VIM.